biggest tips and tricks. Today we got some exciting tips on airfare, how to get a less expensive flight. It tends to be one of the biggest questions I'm asked about Las Vegas. How do I get a cheap flight? I'm just going to tell you there's no magic formula, but I've got some tips. First off, glad to be back with you. Had a great visit last weekend with the family. Got to see uh, mom and dad. Um, they're going through some changes in life, which uh, happen to all of us as we get a little older, but I uh, was happy to be able to spend some time with them and happy to still have them with me. So uh, I hope you enjoyed last weekend's look at the Bellagio Conservatory. And I hope you're enjoying the vlog. Had a really long vlog uh, this past Wednesday. Got one that's probably going to be almost as long, maybe even longer, this Wednesday for the big day five, the final full day in Las Vegas with uh, more food, more fun, and more slot bonuses. I got a lot of slot bonuses, recorded almost all of them. So if you enjoy that kind of thing, I hope you'll stay tuned and check that out coming up Wednesday. So I should do one of those like points where I like smile like, so I get like one of those little snapshot things to lead in. I always look grumpy in these videos and I hope I'm not. I'm not grumpy today, I'm happy today. Temperature's actually up into the 50s today around here, so winter may finally be lifting. I uh, understand it's been nice in Las Vegas as well. So if you're visiting Las Vegas this weekend, I have some bad news. It's the shortest weekend of the year, but uh, hey, it's better than being anywhere else, right? Thanks to the new subscribers to the channel, thanks to the folks that are now following us on Twitter, on Instagram, people who've joined us on the Facebook group, all of those numbers heading up, and I appreciate all of you for uh, participating. So airfare, again, probably, maybe, the biggest cost for most people, particularly if you're traveling some distance to get to Las Vegas, uh, it's probably going to be the most expensive element of the trip. Uh, for some people, it may be hotels. It depends on you know, how much money you're spending. So, um, again, I know they have sort of options to sort of bid for airfare and stuff. I really don't like that option for the same reason that I'm not super thrilled with like the big travel sites where you punch in the dates and it comes back, hey, here's a cheap airfare. Yeah, if I want to have six hours worth of layovers, change planes twice and come back on a different airline. Maybe that's worth it to you to save 20, 30, 50 bucks. It's not worth it to me. So... Those are things to look at. Um, certainly the big travel websites, hey, Orbitz, there's one. Not a sponsor of this video, trust me, okay? Got nothing against them, but not promoting them either. But if you go on there, you can type it in. It'll give you an idea, at least, of kind of the prevailing right rates, and you can go from there. Um, keep in mind that there are smaller airlines, uh, or other airlines, Southwest, for example, also not a sponsor, Allegiant Airlines, also not a sponsor, who are not on any of the big travel websites. So you're going to have to go to those individual um, airline websites to check prices. Also, remember, anytime you're looking at an airfare, to check all of the small print. Because sometimes what looks like a cheaper airfare isn't. If you have to pay extra fees, I, I, I fully expect there'll be a fee, a boarding fee, but you saying, oh, you mean you wanted to actually be on the plane? Well, that's an extra $20, sir. Uh, but, you know, they charge you for um, checking bags. Sometimes they charge you for carrying on bags. They charge you for whether you want to go in early, whether you want this seat or that seat. Everything is a fee. And then you get there and they want money for a drink or a snack as well. So figure all of those things into the equation before you sort of uh, pull the trigger on any particular airfare. Okay? Now, uh, a little side note here, and it does apply to me, even though I'm not that frequent a traveler. If, for whatever reason, you have been a frequent flyer on a particular airline, make sure that you're taking advantage of that airline's frequent flyer programs. Um, I'm going to mention myself, um, I fly out of Kansas City, uh, the, typically the only uh, airline that flies non-stop to Las Vegas is Southwest. I use them because I do not want six hours or two hours worth of layovers. Um, given the fact that I'm already going to fly that airline 95% of the time, um, I'm a member of the Rapid Rewards group. Uh, I have their branded credit card, which I use for a number of recurring bills. 
Um, and over the course of probably the last half a dozen years, I've gotten three flights for free to Las Vegas. That's the best price of all is free. So if you're already traveling a good deal for business or to other parts of the country, uh, look at those airlines that you're using and uh, it may be worth it to you to go ahead and uh, certainly to join their frequent flyer program, but even to have their branded credit cards because you can, you know, it doesn't take a lot sometimes um, to earn a free flight. Thing to remember. Um, you know, I mentioned this talking about the orbits thing. Um, Beware of lots of transfers and layovers. I mean, if you're going to go to Las Vegas for two or three weeks, okay, maybe a couple extra hours here and there isn't a big deal. But for the average person who's going for three or four days, all that extra time in the airports is, to me, is wasted money. Uh, you're flushing it down the toilet. You know, you've, uh, you've saved and you've planned for a big vacation. You're going to have a great time and you're spending one or two percent of your vacation waiting for another plane or you know having to change planes it's worth it to pay a little more I believe um, if you can avoid that and I typically will always pay a little more for that privilege another tip that applies to a lot of folks because many people live in areas uh, service one way or another, by a number of different airports. Um, make sure you're checking prices from all of those airports, any place that you, you know, feel comfortable driving. Now, I wouldn't drive six hours to save $10, but I might drive an extra 30 minutes or 45 minutes to save $50. And sometimes you can see that sort of dramatic difference uh, from airline, to, from uh, airport to airport. So if you're in Chicago, hey, you don't, you know, Limit yourself to O'Hare, think about Midway, think about even Milwaukee. Are there any local sort of regional airports that may be serviced by Allegiant? Things to think about. Again, not endorsing any of these airports or any of these airlines. They all have their good and bad features, but something to consider. You could save money just by, you know, a little bit of delay here and there. Kind of contradicts what I said before, but maybe I like driving better than I like waiting in airports. Another key factor is timing. Um, if you're going into Las Vegas when there's a lot of other people going into Las Vegas, guess what? You're going to pay more for the privilege. Particularly busy times of the year are typically the times when it's nicest, when you're out there in April or May or September or October when the weather is wonderful. So you may be able to get a better deal if you're willing to book in the middle of the summer when it's kind of, well, it's very hot actually or if you're willing to book uh, during the winter months. Um, but even then, you've got to look at specific dates because um, a lot of the ways that Las Vegas keeps itself going during those slower periods is by booking a number of conventions. So you may think January would be a great month to go to Las Vegas. Well, it turns out there's a lot of conventions in January. It's some of the most expensive times to go to Las Vegas if you're not looking at specific dates. Almost any website you look at, whether it's an airline site or whether it's a big travel site, will let you view a calendar. So uh, you should be able to see uh, when these sort of hot spots are of travel that you would like to avoid. So check that out. Try not to have a particularly set date. And sometimes that's difficult depending on our jobs and our other responsibilities, but try to have some flexibility. You can save a lot of money. Along those lines, probably my best tip based upon uh, research that I have done over the years of carefully checking airfares from Las Vegas to all over the country and back. You do not want, you, if you want to get the cheapest fares, you have to fly in and out when other people aren't. Um, you know, for most people, they're thinking, hey, I'm going to take a long weekend, go to Vegas, I'm going to fly out there on Thursday, come back Sunday, I'm going to fly out Friday, come back Monday, whatever. Yeah, guess what? Those are the most expensive days to fly into Las Vegas or to fly out of Las Vegas. What should you do? Hey, if you're willing to fly in on Tuesday and come back on Saturday, or maybe fly in on Saturday, come back on Wednesday, guess what? Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday are your friends when it comes to airfares. And of course, there's going to be exceptions depending upon special events. 
But those are the days, generally speaking, that you're going to find the best prices. Now, you may not be there the whole weekend. Maybe that's the deal. Or maybe you just have the weekend or a three-day weekend. Again, if you're in a position where you know, you're stuck on certain specific dates, you, you just have to deal with what you can. But if you can be flexible, that's going to give you the best prices of all. Um, finally, timing can be valuable. Um, you know, if you want the best airfare, you're going to have to check again and again and again and again. You know, my advice is if there's a particular target price you're looking at and it pops up, take it. If the price goes dramatically down, you can usually rebook. Even sometimes there's a fee, but if it goes down enough, it can be worth it. Um, you know, if you're satisfied with the price that you're paying and it's within your budget, I always say jump on it. Uh, I'd say the sweet spot is about six to eight weeks out from a flight, but again, that's in general. Uh, specific things can change. You can sometimes get great airfares at the last minute, and sometimes you'll pay five or ten times what you were going to would have paid six weeks earlier. So, is it worth you worth it to you to keep checking over and over again? Um, again. It might not be if it's five or ten dollars. It might be if you happen to suddenly see an airfare go from two fifty to one fifty. That does sometimes happen. You can subscribe to emails from different sites. Sometimes they're helpful. Sometimes they're not. Uh, check on a Tuesday. Typically Tuesday mornings are when you see a lot of uh, deals pop up. So that's the best time to look. But again, no magic numbers. There's no magic websites. But if you do your due diligence, if you're flexible, if you keep checking, um, and you set yourself a specific price range that you're willing to pay and that you're comfortable with, I think you can get the airfare to Las Vegas that's going to lead you to have a good holiday and not feel like you were gouged. So I hope this uh, little tip segment has been helpful to you. If you have any air, airline price tips, leave them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, give us a comment, like it, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Uh, tell all your friends. Um, we're having a good time here on Vegas Tips and Tricks, whether we're in Las Vegas or we're in my den. Either way, we're going to talk about Vegas. We'll be back again next week with more Vegas Tips. Until then, I hope you have a great week and a lucky week, and we will see you soon.